Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You're in the right place if you're looking to work smarter, not harder, whether you be an agent, a team leader, a broker owner. Again, we're trying to bring value to you, to the marketplace. And so, you know, we're always looking to fill voids uh, with our guests. Maybe we don't want redundancy. We don't want the same topic. Sometimes there's natural overlapping, but we're always looking to fill voids. And I feel like today's guest will definitely be doing that. But before I bring on our guest, uh, just a reminder, if you have any questions about today's podcast or a previous podcast, please shoot us an email. Michael, shoot me an email, Michael at MarketingLuxuryGroup.com, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. And if you have any suggestions on future topics or you want to nominate somebody, we get a lot of uh, inquiries. I, get, I just looked at an email today. Somebody was recommending somebody from San Francisco. And, and, and so if you have somebody or you think you would be a great guest, shoot me an email, Michael at MarketingLuxuryGroup.com. And uh, don't forget, we have some great free content with our video blogs. You can go to LuxuryListingSpecialist.com, LuxuryListingSpecialist.com, and look at the resource tab where you'll find a bunch of free content there. Keep raising the bar. Again, we are in this uh, unique time in real estate with COVID-19, and so we're going to incorporate a little bit of that in our first podcast ever where we're talking about that um, with today's uh, guest. But uh, let me bring on today's guest. We have uh, Ned Stringham from uh, Inside Real Estate. Ned is the CEO of Inside Real Estate, and um, maybe you've heard of KV Core Platform. Well, Ned, tell us a little bit. First off, welcome, and tell us a little bit of, more about Inside Real Estate and KV Core. Good morning, Michael. Happy to uh, good day to join you. Um, Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Inside Real Estate. Um, it's a business uh, that's focused on providing SaaS software tools uh, in the form of a platform that we have called KV Core to brokers, teams, and agents. That platform <clears throat> has been designed and architected to help automate the full life cycle, the full business life cycle of activities that brokers, teams, and agents are required to do. Um, so that includes a whole bunch of lead tools, uh, be that kind of online um, websites, outbound marketing tools, social media tools, which which flow back to that IDX uh, website, which we provide at, at all levels, the broker, team, and agent. Um, we're integrated with over 550 MLSs, so we've got great coverage around the country for all listings. Um, that feeds to uh, listing tools and a, a listing CRM, as, as well as a, a, a sphere, a good CRM sphere that has automation capabilities um, to kind of manage and uh, nurture, nurture your sphere over time. We're integrated with all of the leading transaction management systems. So once a, a deal has been completed or signed up, uh, we're integrated with those to track tasks and manage the forms through those, those systems. Um, and then we also have a commissions management and integrations with accounting systems. So you've got that full end-to-end -end cycle. And then across all of that, which I think is very powerful, we've built an analytics suite that allows us to see how a, a lead progresses through that cycle. So you can make determinations about what things to invest in, what marketing activities and areas to invest in in the front end that really lead to actual results. 
You can also uh, compare the performance of teams and offices and agents uh, to see where best practices are across that cycle. That, that solution, which we call KV Core, we've built over the last five or six years, and we've got almost 200,000 users uh, across our product set. Um, and so it's a very, very exciting time. We have a couple of hundred people, uh, and we've been growing very rapidly organically and uh, are very excited with a whole bunch of great case studies. And, and, uh, and so that, that's basically the business that we've built. Um, okay. Real, real, real quick, um, let me intervene. So talking about life cycle. So that was, uh, again, we're talking about bringing in, you know, bringing in guests that might fill a void we haven't talked about. So, of course, the life cycle of a high-end and luxury clientele, you know, depending on what part of the country you're in, of course, could be, you know, much longer than maybe an entry-level listing, right? So, you know, the, 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 the lower price listings in most markets, right, they sell quicker in some markets, multiple offers, where, you know, that upper 5 that upper 10% of homes, you know, it's a much longer life cycle. So, you know, having the tools, having the resources um, to navigate, to uh, to attract, to do some prospecting, to track, um, you know, is, is going to be really important. You know, one of the things that we always tell agents is diversification of the portfo- of, of their own portfolio. I look at the, the, the clients, the homes they represent as a portfolio, just like a financial advisor. So diversifying your portfolio, you know, not just, you know, the entry level or starter homes and average price homes, but I tell agents work smarter, not harder, and increase your average sale price of a home you represent. And one of the ways you can do that, of course, is represent more high-end and luxury clientele, whether it be on the buy side or the listing side. So diversification is really important. Tracking your numbers is really important. So with that point, you were just get, getting into the, you know, tracking and the analytics side a little bit before I uh, intervened. Yeah, so um, I think a lot of technology companies have entered real estate thinking about how to disintermediate brokers, teams, and agents. We haven't done that at all because our fundamental belief is that these are very important big decisions in people's lives. Uh, the value of buying or selling a home is a, is a significant portion of people's net worth, and they're always going to want to have a trusted advisor to help them through that process. They're not going through this many, many times in their, in their kind of lives. And so our whole approach to this has been how do we empower people in this in this process, brokers, teams, and agents, to use technology and tools to engage, interact, track, and uh, keep keep contact with with potential buyers and sellers and do the work for them that they really don't want to do. They want to spend time with people, building relationships, you know, that whole belly to belly uh, kind of contact. Um, I think in our world today, we can talk about what what we can and can't do with COVID. But um, yeah. this whole idea of when you think about that flow, what can technology do today to automate that process, to reach people where they are, when they are, and, and people are online, they're on their phone. That's That's how you can engage and contact them. And how do you serve those points of contact up to agents at the right moment so that they can have that direct conversation, they can build that relationship. And that's what our system is really designed to do with automations at the front end, you know, to get people to tell you who they are, to give you their contact information. Um, We we determine uh, by looking at how they behave online, how they engage with you, certain kind of automated engagements that come directly from agents to them that move uh, prospects along in that decision cycle. And then the system actually automate uh, in an automated way will call the agent and tell them, hey, it's time to time to reach out to this particular prospect. Here, we're going to dial them. 
Here's the information about them. Here's your historical set of activities and relationship with them, what they're looking at, how you communicated in the past. And we help tee up uh, that information so that they can have the best possible uh, chance of winning winning that deal. That that yeah, so that I think increasing the the conversion. Is, that that dramatically increases the conversion. It allows one individual agent to successfully manage hundreds, if not thousands, of ongoing prospects who are looking on their site, who've engaged them in certain ways. It allows them to keep track of those things very easily and to have them served up right there on their mobile device. Um, and it, it also creates an automated list of calls based on the priorities and engagements of the previous day and week as to who they should call. And people can move through that, take notes very easily, um, keep track of those, you know, 100 hundred folks in their sphere and keep them moving along and, and maintain those relationships. Yeah, so organization, you know, and having, uh, it sounds like artificial intelligence as well, right? So based on what they've liked, what they've looked at, adapting what they're seeing, you know, organizing, prioritization, these are all key buzzwords. And again, for those of you that are listening, many of you have, you know, CRM, perhaps you have some type of automation. And I brought Ned on just to shed light onto, you know, all the, the, you know, all the different nuances that go into, you know, the building a business, putting, building systems, right? Uh, systems that are replicatable, uh, whether, you know, I tell agents all the time, you know, if you were to move and get relocated and start your real estate business in, in a brand new area and you didn't have a sphere in a database, you know, what would be some of the things you would do to, right off the bat to be successful? And, you know, a lot of things that Ned has just, you know, rattled off, you know, the key buzzwords, right? Life cycle, tools, systems, uh, lead gen, um, prioritization. These are all key buzzwords, especially in this, you know, COVID-19 or post-COVID-19 time. I think people realize more so now than ever you know, that we have to time block, we have to be more organized, we have to, you know, uh, have our priorities in line, not just in business, but outside of business. And Ned, you know, what I hear you saying is a successful, you know, uh, a successful, uh, you know, website with back office capabilities and CRM that, that helps navigate and helps you as an agent prioritize, you know, who may be your top A list you know, leads or clients are need to be touched more frequently and differently than maybe your your next list and it, it, you know, which I call my B my B list and the C list is everybody else. Is is is, is that fair yeah. to say? It is. Um, and in fact, what we see is there's lots of ways to be successful in in this industry. Um, there isn't one perfect path. There are many paths uh, to success. And one of the things that we've done, well, while our KV Core platform provides all those essential, com essential components that pretty much every, everyone needs, they need some online presence, they need to be you know, out in social media, they need uh, to have a CRM to track things, they, they need to process the transaction flow, they need to um, be able to automate their commissions calculations and so forth. But we've also built a marketplace on, on top of that, which allows individual agents to select add-on tools that might be specific to their particular area of interest, where they want to generate leads, what works in their specific area or their target community. You know, some people focus on listings, so we have great tools around um, listings and listing presentations and how to attract more listing opportunities. We have uh, tools for people who want really to do that pure online kind of um, work. We have great tools for people who focus on a narrow, small sphere and nurture those people aggressively over time. And uh, these, these kind of add-on tools allow individual agents and teams to tailor the solution to what they want. In fact, what we've created 
the KV Core solution we sell to brokers. Um, they they offer that then to all their agents, and we also have within that solution a team can buy their own kind of business within a business solution that allows them to tailor their own websites, their own lead routing, their own um, CRM and CRM campaigns, their own collateral and, and marketing identity. It also allows their data to be uh, anonymized so that while the broker will know that they have a certain contact, they won't know the specifics of that content in, within the system. So it gives them privacy for their data so they can trust, so they can put that data in the system uh, as a team. But it, it still allows the broker to track and see what's happening. Say the broker has a leads program that they're funneling leads down to teams and agents through. Um, so this idea of, of um, there, there isn't kind of one perfect way to be successful. We've seen lots sure. of people be successful in different ways. We've tried to create an ecosystem around our platform that allows them to tailor and to build their brand and and their identity uniquely, even, they're, even though they're using a common set of, of tools. Hi, it's Michael Lafito here with a quick break from the podcast. If you are committed to increasing your average sale price and you want to work smarter, not harder, then you want to visit LuxuryListingSpecials.com for more information on the Lux designation along with some free resources. And now, let's get back to the show. So, you know, again, a lot to digest here if you're driving, listening to this podcast, if, if you don't have a robust back office, so to speak. Um, you know, but let's, let's keep it really simple before we... We move on. So, you know, if you were to have an agent's toolbox, so to speak, Ned, you know, what are some things, and I want to be cognizant and sensitive to those agents that are cutting back or or maybe don't have a huge budget, but, you know, would you name uh, just a, a few things that in an agent's toolbox, so to speak, that you think they would need? So, obviously, a, a website, that's no-brainer-ish in today's, you know, t 2020. So, an agent would need, you know, a website, correct? Yes. I think they need, you know, you know they, they need those basic components to kind of store contact information to be able to communicate with their sphere. They need an online presence. They should have a, a social media presence as well as a as a website presence. Um, they, you know, uh, we have a, a lot of tools that are do-it-yourself tools that within the system. So you can create your own, your own URL. You can create your own. Uh, Facebook campaign. You can, um, I think there's a, a set of 22 different lead generation tools that are do it yourself tools. We also have integrations and services for ad based offerings. And all of these lead sources can be integrated so they flow seamlessly into a single CRM and you can track all of that activity in, in an in inclusive way. You don't have to have multiple kinds of systems and components around. Um, okay. So I think, I, I do think though that there are areas people focus on that they want to add on to that that makes sense for their own particular business and, you know, uh, like we talked about, that they ought to consider. One of the things I'd, I'd also say is that in this time when being mindful of your costs is important, looking to what the broker has provided um, and trying to take advantage of the tools that come with your relationship with the broker is a smart thing to do, especially if it provides you privacy. Um, mm -hmm. For example, we that team solution that I described, our core team solution where people get all that, all that capability for their team. A lot of people are out buying standalone team solutions that might cost $1,600, $1,500 a month. Our team solution, if your broker has the KV Core platform, uh, you know, is only it is is a third of that price. Uh, and so there's a, there's there's real cost savings if you'll look at the tools that your brokers are providing. I'd say to agents, you may be able to shed um, a lot of costs with those those extra solutions you've been you've been buying and trying to piece together. You know, we find that. 
when we go into a brokerage, they're eliminating seven, maybe ten solutions when they when they uh, you know sign up and start using KV Core because they've been buying these things piecemeal and trying to stitch them together over time. And that's you know that's probably a they're going to save uh, a substantial amount that. That kind of piecemeal approach is probably two to three times more expensive when you add in the internal staff that you need to to make sure the website vendor integrates with your CRM vendor and integrates with your social media and you coordinate and negotiate pricing with all those different vendors. It, it's a yeah. much more costly uh, total cost of ownership than than having an integrated solution. Um, so and much, then you give your like. Ex- much like an Xfinity, right? You can you can get high speed internet and get your security from somebody else and get you know your cable from somebody else. But when you bundle services together, whether it be with KV Core or, or another platform, you're you're more or less to, you, you can trim away some fat and some excess cost. I hear you is, is what I hear you saying. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's that's the mm-hmm. simple facts, and that's what happens in software industries. Uh, other other industries, you know, all over the planet. That's how it naturally evolves. Somebody creates a, a a social blogging tool, and then their customers that like that say, "Hey, you know, why don't you put the website so we can track the leads into our in, into the web? Why don't you create mm-hmm. a CRM that we can?" So these things naturally happen, and where everything is headed is towards this idea of buy a fundamental platform for your business. Give yourself a good uh, integration tool, uh, a marketplace, and integration tool set, which is what our marketplace does. So you can then add on the components to tailor your own ecosystem of solutions. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, no, that does make sense. Um, You know, 10, 15 years ago, a lot of, uh, I call them, you know, you mentioned having a website and be able to collect people's information. Well, to be able to collect people's information, you need something valuable on a website. So 10 to 15 years ago, there were a lot of, you know, free reports, seven reasons to sell your home in the spring versus, you know, in the fall or whatever mm-hmm. it might be. Um, you know, recently, you know, about three to four years ago, it seemed like everyone was pushing, you know, instant home value. Find out what your home is worth today. Um, what is there any particular tool that you guys offer that you're seeing a lot of traction, a lot of buzz, um, maybe that's used more um, than other tools uh, in, in people's back office that, you know, best practice, maybe something that you're seeing is it, you know, is it the home value? Is it? Wait, 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 um, wait. I, I think that's a good one. I mean, obviously the, um, th- there's just so many of those I could point out. I mean, one specific one that we've, had a tremendous uptake on one is our is our property boost product, which is a, a kind of fully automated listing uh, ad product. So when you get a listing, you can boost that listing. We've we've extended that to open houses where you can boost that. And then most recently, we released a virtual open house tool. Um, that allows people to kind of leverage Facebook features to create very inexpensive virtual open houses. And often these right. tools where they want to boost, um, we've seen we've seen quite a bit of that even recently where uh, people have an existing listing, this distancing, social distancing to come into place. They want to uh, put a little extra effort behind those those things and they've they've done some boosts. Um, so, you know, we've we've uh, just announced recently that we've um, created an integration with BombBomb, which is a video email. We've created a unique feature that people get uh, as part of KV Core, and then they can easily add on the full uh, feature set of BombBomb to our system. That's a, a video oh, email, yeah. which has been very popular in the kind of COVID world where you want to you want to engage people and uh, video, you know, can be a better, a better way than just uh, a phone call and a, an audio, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. We had that. Ethan on from, uh, he's co-author of uh, Rehumanize and, and uh, he's with BombBomb and we're big, big fans of video 
communication, video, email. I think, you know, I, I tell people all the time, shy real estate agents have skinny kids, you know, is a, is a, is a little joke. <laughs> I said. But, you know, the reality of it is that is I think the vast majority of real estate agents, you know, with Zoom trainings and, and everything else through COVID-19 are realizing that they have to get on the video uh, train. It's not a fad. Fads come and go. The last question I have for you, and very insightful, by the way, is, you know, and I, I just heard one of the ways, and maybe that's your answer, but, you know, how has your company pivoted during this COVID-19, distant learning, uh, you know, uh, you know, are you guys changing your CRM messages, your content? Sounds like you're offering the virtual tour boosting, uh, which obviously that's something that is, uh, excuse me, the virtual open house um you know, boosting that, which sounds like that just came out of COVID-19. But am I, is that, you know, is that yeah, something we, that you we, guys? We launched um, what we call our COVID response plan in uh, kind of the last third week of March, I think it was. And we've got kind of four four areas that we're working, that we've, we've taken action on. The first um, is kind of financial uh, assistance um, for existing customers. We've created a deferral uh, plan where they can, uh, for for Q2, we allow them to defer half of their uh, fees, their subscription fees, uh, and extend those out into the future so they could get relief. For new customers, we uh, had a promotion where they extended their contract slightly in order to get the initial 60 days free, which we thought would get them through this Q2 period, which looked tricky. We also launched a massive virtual training summit in the month of April, and we're in the midst of that. We uh, are on track to have about 30,000 user sessions, um, individual users in our sessions. There's 15 or 16 different courses that we've created. That's an exciting one. It looks like we'll we'll possibly extend that into May. You know, instead of being out selling in the spring as much as uh, that, you know, the usual seasonal track, um, people have time to learn. And so we've really put some intensive effort in there and had a great response. We've also kind of third are releasing a, a set of sets of products that are specific to the needs. Of this time, I talked about the virtual open house tool. Um, there are others underway, uh, and we're we're trying to kind of be responsive in in the way our product functions. The bomb bomb integration is one that's a perfect uh, timing for this as well. So there'll be mm -hmm. more of those to come. And then the fourth thing that we've done is we we created a. Uh, basically an information and resource page uh, with a blog so people could come to it around securing the, the PPP, uh, the, the kind of government loan programs that are out there, federal and state, so that our, our customers could have a place to go and do some collaboration around what, what potential financial support resources there were uh, that were being offered. So those those were kind of the things that we've done so far. I think, uh, yeah. I, I'm kind of stepping back, one more point I, I'd like to make. I don't know if you have sure. time for this, but it's just yeah. that I've, you know, I've I've been the CEO, uh, um, you know, through the dot com crisis with a, a, a technology kind of uh, marketing, internet business. Um, I've been through 2008 as a CEO, so I've been through a couple of these cycles. And one of the things that it has taught me is is this simple idea that a, you know one step forward in a in a down cycle is like five steps forward in a growth cycle. And so hmm. for us, we're trying to double down and really work and think about our product and advance our product in a very aggressive way during this this period rather than rather than pull back we we already had a very profitable business going into this that's given us a great cushion um, we've got a really strong financial backer so we're not we're not in a position to be weak financially and so we're trying to move forward 
uh, intelligently and aggressively. You know, it's kind of perilous times, but what I've learned is that taking those affirmative steps means so much more um, right now to the health and long-term viability and strength of your business um, and your brand. Uh, what you do now tells people really who you are and the character of your business. You know, and I, I encourage everybody to think about that. Are you are you retrenching, trying to squeeze everybody for the last nickel you can get? And are you, is that the kind of company you are? And do you want to create a brand image like that, or or do you want to be affirmative and get out in front of this? And that's what we've tried to do. Yeah, some really some really great nuggets you shared. The COVID response plan. I mean, you know, for those listeners. Um, you know, have you created a COVID response plan uh, for your current clients, uh, for your past clients, for your prospects, for your staff, uh, you know, to bring value? And, and, and the other part that I really liked is, you know, in, in a normal market, you know, to make a, an Im- impact and, and raise the bar, you might have to implement, you know, I think you said five things to, to take your business to the next level. But in a slower market or this unknown market and that we're in, you know, for every one or two things, you know, it's, it's, it's like the multiplication of five. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to impact even more. So going back to 2007 and eight, there was many people that pulled back on marketing and branding and putting themselves out there. And it, it, it's, it was much more difficult for them to catch up when the market came back, right? It's, it's no different um, than the airlines, although they've, they're hurting and they're going to hurt for a long time, you know, they didn't stop flights. And so there was, you know, body in motion stays in motion. There's still a little momentum to build off of. And that's what I'd recommend for agents and broker owners and team leaders. So, Ned, um, first off, you know, thank you for your time and, and a lot of great nuggets there, a totally different angle um, and more of that left brain analytical, comprehensive, um, you know, life cycle look and feel, uh, you know, we, we brought to the audience today. So thank you so much. Um, if anybody wants to find out more um, about Inside Real Estate, KV Core, what's the best way for them to do that? I think go to our website, which is insiderealestate.com. And uh, there's there's a whole lot of information there and ability to make contact and, you know, we'll respond promptly. Uh, we've also opened up our training uh, more more broadly. So anybody could uh, participate in some of the things we're doing. So uh, that's something oh, that's people great. could uh, get involved in and participate in as well. All right. So check out InsideRealEstate.com, InsideRealEstate.com. There's some great um, resources there and some training, even if you're not a member. Um, Ned just shared that. So so that that's awesome. I appreciate it. And um, thanks for being on today. Happy to do it, Michael. Take care. Be Thank safe. you. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Appreciate it. And for those of you that have any questions, as I mentioned in the beginning, shoot us an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup. Keep raising the bar. Be a great neighbor. Be a good team leader. You know, be thoughtful. Be a great listener. And um, make someone's day. Again, find out more information on our our free resources as well as our designation. You can go to luxury listing specialist.com. Don't forget our designation has zero sales requirements. So in other words, if you haven't sold high-end and luxury homes previously, you can go through our course and get our designation, which will help leverage and differentiate yourself from the competition. I literally just had two people send me notes. One gal was from Dallas and she's with a big major franchise and she did not qualify for the designation. Her her company um, suggests or, or requires to be in their luxury division. And she said within 30 days, she landed two high-end clients because of our designation. And we just had another gal in Mexico uh, pretty much tell us the same thing. So again, differentiate yourself, bring more value, be a better person. My name is Michael Lafito. Until next time, remember, it's not the market, it's the marketing, and keep raising the bar in real estate. Take care, everybody. 